What is up there YouTube? This is J Man Time and today I have a video on the evolution of British medium tanks from 1917 until 1945. Now keep in mind that in the British military back in those days there was actually a difference between medium tanks, infantry support tanks, cavalry tanks, and cruiser tanks. I will have to cover those vehicles in a separate video, but for now, we're gonna go over the vehicles, the tanks that were listed or are listed as medium tanks in the British Army of World War I and World War II. So let's go into it. And the first tank on the list is the medium tank Mark A, also known as the Whippet. And the Whippet was a medium tank designed originally in 1917 during World War I, entering service in late 1917, early 1918. Its main armament was four .303 caliber modified Hotchkiss light machine guns. Her armor thickness or their armor thickness was between 6 and 14 millimeters and they had a speed of 13.4 kilometers per hour or 8.3 miles per hour and a crew of 3 to 4. Now the Whippet tank was the second most common tank in the British Army during World War One, in terms of type. Now the British had light tanks, but they also had heavy tanks too of the British Mark I through V series. But there were other, several other Mark I through V series upgrades that never entered service. The medium Mark A Whippet was also the fastest British tank, having a speed of 13, almost 14 miles per hour. and was also faster than most other tanks being used by the Allies, including the French Renault FT-17. Now this tank is most famous for its use during the Battles of Flanders, the Spring Offensive, and the Battle of Amiens, which all happened in 1918. And during that time period, the Germans referred to this vehicle as the Black Death, as they call it, or the Devil's Chariot. And later on, after World War I, these vehicles would continue to be used by other countries, including Ireland, the Empire of Japan, and some of these would continue to be used by British colonial forces up until at least the 1920s, the late 1920s, before they were eventually replaced. The Whip End was an interesting tank for its era, and like I said, this was pretty much one of the better British tanks of World War I. Now keep in mind the heavier Mark I through V series were good tanks, kind of, for that era, but they had a huge number of mechanical issues, and the fact that they were huge targets made them much easier to destroy for German forces. Whereas the Whippet was simply too fast for most of the German army, to take care of. Several whippets were actually captured by the Germans. They were also used during the German Revolution of 1919, along with some other captured British and French tanks. But that basically ends it for the whippet. The next tank on the list is the Medium Mark B, also designed in 1918. Now, the Medium Mark B was originally designed as a replacement for the Whippet tank, but unfortunately World War I came to an end before the Medium Mark B could actually be used on the front lines. Now, this vehicle had a main armament of four point three zero three caliber Hotchkiss machine guns, just like the Medium Tank Mark A Whippet, an armor thickness of 6 to 14 millimeters, but a reduced speed of just 6 miles per hour. So this vehicle was slightly faster than the British Mark 1 through 5 series of heavier tanks, but much slower than the Whippet tank that it was designed to replace. Ultimately, these tanks were used in the UK and Ireland for a short period of time before they were eventually sold for scrap in the mid to late 1920s. But it was an interesting footmark in British medium tank history. The British Medium Mark C, also known as the Hornet. And the Hornet was a medium tank that was also designed in 1918. Its main armament was five point three zero three caliber Hotchkiss machine guns, its armor thickness was 6 to 14 millimeters, and it had a speed also of 7.8 miles per hour, which was slightly faster than the medium Mark B, but still slower than the medium Mark A Whippet. And these tanks were actually used by both the British and Irish militaries for a short period of time 
in the late 1910s and early to mid 1920s. I believe some of these were still used as training tanks all the way up until the early years of World War II by the British Home Guard between 1939 and 1940. But after 1941, their history seems to have stopped as they were most likely sold for scrap afterwards. the strangest but my favorite of these World War I era medium tanks designed by the British and that is the Medium Mark D from 1918. The Medium Mark D was a semi-amphibious tank or an amphibious tank designed at the very end of World War I. Its main armament was also 5.303 caliber machine guns, its armor thickness was 6 to 14 millimeters, and it had a speed of 22.9 miles per hour, so much faster than the Medium Mark A Whippet. Unfortunately, this tank also never entered service before World War I ended, and it was mostly used as an experimental medium tank from 1918 until about 1925. An interesting tank, but unfortunately it came too late to be of any use to the British Empire. And here comes my favorite class of British medium tanks from the 1920s. And the first one on the list is the Vickers Medium Mark I from 1924. Now, this is actually my favorite of the British tanks designated as medium tanks. Its main armament was one 47 millimeter three pounder gun. It also had the 5.303 caliber Vickers machine guns. Its armor thickness was only four to six 0.25 millimeters or 4 to 6 millimeters and it had a speed of 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour and a crew of five and only 140 of these vehicles were made. This vehicle is my favorite because of how strange it looks in the British inventory just before the beginning of World War II. But it is still an interesting British tank. These tanks actually served up until the mid 1930s where most of them were decommissioned along with the upgraded versions, the Mark II and III. It is unknown if any of these Mark I's actually served in World War II, but it is still an interesting tank. This vehicle is actually better than the British Matilda I, which was a infantry support tank or cavalry tank that was used during the Battle of France in 1940 and that tank was horrible. The British should have just given their soldiers these medium Mark 1s instead of those garbage Matilda ones. But let's move on to the next tank. And the next tank on the list is the Vickers Medium Mark II, which was an upgrade to the Mark I, and this medium tank entered service in 1925. Its main armament was basically the same, 147mm 3-pounder gun. She was also armed with 5.303 caliber Vickers machine guns. Hotchkiss machine guns, and she also had an armor thickness of only 4 to 6 millimeters and a speed of just 15.5 miles per hour and a crew of 5, but 167 of these were made and some of these were actually used during the early stages of World War II between 1939 and 1941. Some of these Mark IIs were used by the British Army in Egypt and also during the North Africa campaign as a whole. These tanks were also used during the Anglo invasion of Iraq, also known as the Anglo-Iraqi War of 1941. And during that time period, two of these vehicles were rebuilt into two obsolete Vickers Medium Mark II tanks were pulled out of storage and actually reconstructed and they were given the names Walrus and Tylon and they served in the 
British Army during the invasion of Iraq in 1941. And the final of the Vickers series of medium tanks was the Vickers Medium Mark III from 1930. And this was a massive upgrade to the Mark I and Mark II, but sadly these tanks never made it past the prototype stage. Their main armament was one 47mm 3 pounder gun. They were also fitted with 3.303 caliber Vickers machine guns. And they had an armor thickness of 9 to 14 millimeters and a speed of 30 miles per hour or 48 kilometers per hour and a crew of seven. But these are actually the most depressing of the tanks as they were actually a pretty good design at least to me. These tanks would have done better at the beginning of World War II than many other British tanks in service like the aforementioned Matilda 1 series of light cavalry slash infantry support tanks that entered service just before World War II. But unfortunately, the Vickers Media Mark III never made it past the prototype stage, and only three of these vehicles were ever constructed, and they were largely used as training vehicles in the 1930s until, until being placed in storage around 1936 and 1937. That brings us to the most interesting armored fighting vehicle on the list. And these are actually two completely separate vehicles that were constructed at the same time. And these were actually used by the British forces. And these were the tanks that were nicknamed Walrus and Thailand. And Walrus and Thailand were two improvised infantry support tanks that were constructed in 1941, just before the invasion of Iraq. Now, the British had actually been preparing for the invasion of Iraq once Rashid Ali Al Ghulani took over in April 1941. So they had about 30 days to prepare and during that 30 days one of the British army groups actually constructed some improvised tanks and these were two vehicles that were nicknamed Walrus and Thailand and they had a armor they had a main armament of one or two 7.7 millimeter Vickers or Lewis machine guns. They could also be fitted with one 37 millimeter Vickers gun or one two pounder anti-tank gun or 140 millimeter two pounder anti-tank gun the second version the second tank Thailand could be fitted with a 40 millimeter anti-tank gun if needed the first tank the armor thickness of these vehicles were between 6 and 10 millimeters they had a speed of around 13 miles per hour or 21 kilometers per hour and a crew of between two and four. These tanks were actually constructed using British Dragoon Caterpillar tractors, and they were actually modeled after the Vickers medium tank Mark One and Two. And these were two classes of British medium tanks that were designed in the 1920s. So these vehicles were actually designed to mimic those vehicles. The only differences between these two vehicles is the turret. The the improvised tank Walrus has the turret of a British Rolls Royce armored car, while the Thailand actually has a more conventional turret that can be fitted with a 37 or 40 millimeter anti-tank gun. And these two improvised tanks were used by a mixed unit of British, British Indian, and Syrian and Iraqi Assyrian troops that were under orders from the British Army, and they were used during the invasion of Iraq in 1941. Now, what happened to these tanks after 1941 is a mystery, as I cannot find any more information on the walrus in Thailand, but it seems they might have been decommissioned around 1942 and 1943, after the fall of the German army in North Africa during Operation Torch. So I guess these tanks were pretty much useless after 1941. By 1942, the British were using more advanced tanks. So I'm pretty sure the British army um, occupying Iraq would have received some of those newer tanks. And so these improvised tanks were pretty much useless. And the final British medium tank of the Second World War was kind of a cop-out for the British, and that is the Sherman Firefly from 1943. The Sherman Firefly was a British upgrade to the old M4 Sherman that had been in production since around 1940-1941, and Britain had been using the M4 Sherman since at least 1941-1942. This vehicle had an upgraded armament of one 76.2 millimeter Q. 17 pounder gun or 17 pounder anti-tank gun. Its secondary armament was one 12.7 millimeter American-made M2 Browning heavy machine gun. 
Gun. And it also had a 7.62 millimeter Browning M1919 coaxial machine gun. Its armor thickness was 89 millimeters at its maximum, and it had a speed of 20 miles per hour or 32 kilometers per hour, and a crew of four. And over 2,200 of these were made. But it still doesn't take away from the fact that the British basically gave up designing their own medium tank. Now, they continued to develop their own, you know, cruiser tanks and cavalry tanks and infantry support tanks, but the Sherman Firefly was basically a cop-out, a really good cop-out, as the Sherman Firefly was one of the few British tanks that could actually take on heavier German tanks like the Tiger I and also the Panther tanks, which were a big thorn in the British side during the early parts of the Second World War. And by 1943, the British finally had an answer to the Tiger tank on their front with the Sherman Firefly, and also an answer to the newer Panther tanks being produced by the German army for the Wehrmacht and Waffen-SS. And that basically ends it for British, for British medium tanks. Now, like I said at the beginning of this video, there is a difference between medium tanks, cavalry tanks, infantry support tanks, and cruiser tanks. So I will have to cover those tanks in a separate video. But which of these are your favorite? If you ask me, I like the Vickers Medium Mark I and the Medium Mark III as my favorite of the British medium tanks of the years before and during the Second World War. So what do you think of these vehicles? Please tell me in the comment section below. And until next time, this was J-Man Time signing off.